Hi everyone, and thanks for joining today's Moldflow webinar. My name is Beth, and today we will be discussing center line extraction and the new bubbler and baffle modeling available in Moldflow Insight 2018.2. Throughout the presentation, um, please feel free to ask us questions along the way, and we'll do our best to get them answered for you. We have a number of support specialists, including myself, Justin, Paul, Javier, and Jay in the background who are also available to answer your questions. As usual, we will also be posting the slide deck to the public folder listed here, which is autodesk.box.com backslash moldflow30 for you to be able to download it. Uh, this webinar recording will also be posted to our YouTube um, channel afterwards, as well as an email will be sent out with the YouTube link and the link to the Autodesk public box folder. Um, and again, here is the question box uh, for your reference. So before we dive into the content of today's webinar, I wanted to quickly cover some previous webinar topics as well as upcoming webinar topics that we have done and will be presenting on. Some of the upcoming webinars that we will present on are how to record and use macros in Autodesk Multiflow Insight. And for any advisor users out there, we're also planning on doing a webinar with uh, tips and tricks in Moldflow Advisor. Some of the past webinars we have done are on topics such as what's new in the Autodesk Moldflow 2018.2 release, as well as utilizing Autodesk Moldflow Communicator to review analysis results. Again, if you're ever curious about any of these past webinars, their recordings are uploaded to our YouTube channel, which is the Autodesk Sim 360 page. They will be listed under the Build Your Simulation IQ section. And if you've received the invite for this webinar from a colleague, you can always go to our forums or any of the options listed here to sign up for the webinar series yourself. This way, once you sign up for the Autodesk webinar help series, you'll receive an email, you'll receive email reminders and the upcoming webinars will be listed on your email calendar so that you can easily join the ones that you would like to attend. And as a quick summary, we'd like to share with those of you who are not familiar with our knowledge website. We do have a website that the support specialists for all Autodesk products create and write articles based on support topics that users like yourself are coming to us with. So please feel free to explore some of the recent articles that are listed here. You can also go to the Moldflow Insight Troubleshooting article page that has a list of all of the articles that uh, we've created and published. Um, as far as the Moldflow releases and quarterly releases go, you can see here that the most up-to-date version of the simulation job manager is 6.2. Also available in your Autodesk account as of November 14th is the latest Moldflow quarterly release, which is 2018.2. Um, please keep in mind that the, these quarterly releases, um, along with basically all the, all the multiple quarterly releases, are listed under the product enhancements section of your Autodesk account. This new centerline extraction feature that we'll be going over today was new in the 2018.2 release. So keep in mind that in order to have access to this new feature that we'll be demonstrating today, you'll need to make sure you have installed the 2018.2 quarterly release. And with that, we'll go ahead and move into today's agenda. So in today's webinar, we're going to review the new centerline extraction tool that was introduced in Moldflow Insight 2018.2. We'll then review the new simplified method for creating bubblers and baffles in Moldflow Insight 2018.2. Uh, finally, I'll do a small demonstration for you showcasing these new features. So to begin with centerline extraction. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to review the workflow outlined here. Step one includes having a solid body with 3D cooling channel properties ready to use in Moldflow Insight. 
Step two includes extracting the center lines from your solid body with 3D pulling channel properties. Uh, please note that these extracted center lines will retain the correct diameter information. And then finally, step three involves generating and meshing your beam elements from your extracted center lines. So seems pretty simple, right? Manually modeling your cooling channels can be a time consuming task uh, for even relatively simple cooling systems. This new centerline extraction tool that's available in Moldflow Insight 2018.2 definitely simplifies this process for you. Uh, you can now quickly extract the centerline curves from the cooling channels that have been imported into Moldflow as 3D CAD bodies. These extracted centerline curves can then be used to generate cooling channel beam elements. After you assign the property channel 3D to your relevant 3D CAD bodies, the centerline curves can be extracted with only a few additional steps, uh, which we'll be demo demoing for you here shortly, and we think you'll all really benefit from. Again, what we want you to take away from today's webinar is that you can now extract the center line curves from your imported 3D CAD cooling channel bodies, and then use these curves to construct beam elements, which is a requirement for most cooling analyses. Your 3D cooling channels are most likely being designed in your CAD package and then imported into Moldflow as a 3D body. Uh, you alternatively can also use SimStudio tools to generate the 3D CAD representation of your cooling channels if they're not designed or included in your CAD package for whatever reason. In SimStudio tools, you can use a combination of the patching and fluid volume commands to generate your 3D cooling channels from your mold and then export the file as a step file in, uh, and import into Moldflow. Please keep in mind that if you were to only use the patch tool in SimStudio tools, this would only give you a bunch of surfaces. The fluid volume is what generates the solid representation of your 3D channel CAD. And this is what's needed for this workflow and mold flow. It's also worth noting that the channel diameter specified in the CAD design is automatically inherited in the created curves, which is rather neat and convenient. When going through this workflow, it's also important to keep in mind that your imported 3D bodies can appear to be joined, but they may not be completely connected. This will cause breaks in your extracted center line. To overcome this, you can check the continuity or connectivity of the extracted curves using the Mesh Connectivity Diagnostics tool. We'll demonstrate this for you as well here shortly. Um, if running the Connectivity Diagnostics tool shows connectivity issues within the model, you can use the Create Beams to manually repair any breaks. Uh, keep in mind that there may be many uh, channels in a complex mold, and it's recommended to work on a single channel at a time to simplify locating any of these problem areas. The second image here in the lower left illustrates an enlarged opening that may exist at the start or end of your 3D channel. The larger body is to accommodate the coolant hose connector and the smaller body is tapered to improve the engagement of the connector thread. We'd like to point out that the tapered sections are not currently supported with this workflow, uh, causing the break in the red line, which represents the extracted center line that you see here. You can remove both of these bodies for a simpler analysis. Otherwise, you may have to do some manual connectivity repairing as discussed above. Real-world cooling channels are typically manufactured by drilling holes from the outside of the mold that intersect with other holes. The construction section of the channel is then plugged, which can cause an area of stagnant coolant. Models with stagnant areas need both a coolant inlet and a coolant outlet specified so that mold flow can determine the coolant flow path. Being able to apply a coolant outlet boundary condition to a cool analysis is also new in Moldflow Insight 2018.2. Uh, more to come on this on the next slide. 
moving forward in 2018.2, it is recommended to not remove the construction channel, uh, the, your construction channels from your model as the stagnant coolant in these areas heat up and can have an impact on the overall heat of the system. And again, as previously mentioned, tapered bodies are not currently supported with this new workflow. Additionally, non-circular cross sections may not be supported, and it's still suggested to perform a conformal cooling analysis um, to analyze these types of models with non-circular uh, channel cross sections. So as mentioned on the previous slide, in Multiple Insight 2018.2, it is recommended to keep your construction channels in the model as the stagnant coolant in these areas heat up and can have an impact on the overall heat of the system. This workflow will require you to place both a coolant inlet and a coolant outlet on your model in 2018.2 so that Moldflow can determine the coolant path. In the above image on the left, you can see that in Moldflow Insight 2018.1, you were only able to apply coolant inlets for beam elements and the option to apply outlets was not available. Applying coolant outlets is now available in version 2018.2, as you can see here uh, in the image on the right. If your model included the construction channel in Moldflow Insight 2018.1, the solver would not be able to determine the correct flow path and would simply follow the shortest flow path as seen here. In 2018.2, if your model includes the construction channels, but you do not specify your coolant outlets, the um, analysis will fail with error 702281, which is basically letting you know that your circuit inlet node has more than one dead end in the circuit and that you need to specify the correct uh, circuit outlet node. All right, and moving on to bubblers and baffles. So now we'll go ahead and discuss uh, the new methods available in Moldflow Insight 2018.2 for bubbler and baffle modeling, modeling uh, giving you the availability to model both of these in a more simplified way. To begin, shown here are the modeling requirements for baffles and bubbler modeling in Moldflow's versions 2018. 18.1 and prior. Uh, for example, in Moldflow Insight version 2018.1, baffles were modeled with the up and downstream elements separately to represent both the flow up one side of the baffle and then back down the other. You still have the option to model your baffles this way in 2018.2, but in addition and more simply, you can now model the up and downstream elements with a single element. Uh, the same goes for bubblers in 2018.2. So again, the construction of bubblers and baffles has been greatly simplified in Moleflow Insight 2018.2. With this new workflow, you only need to construct a single channel curve to represent either the bubbler or baffle. You then assign the appropriate property to the curve. Uh, upon meshing, the appropriate element is modeled with the correct coolant flow simulated. Uh, as discussed on the last slide, you're no longer required to create a curve for the upward path and then a second curve for the downward path. Even with the bubbler or baffle being modeled as a single element, the analysis can proceed. Please note that you will need to remesh beam elements that have been changed to bubbler or baffle after the fact so that the correct flow path can be generated. All right, and now we'll go into the software here for a little demonstration. So to begin, um, what you wanna do is isolate your layers that have the 3D cooling channel, uh, cooling channels. So we'll go ahead and turn off our part our top cavity block and our bottom core block, which leaves us with uh, our 3D channel representation from our CAD package. Um, step one here would basically involve highlighting over everything, uh, right clicking and changing the property type to channel 3D. All right. And next we want to actually extract our center line curves. So we'll go up to geometry, curves, 
center line. Uh, again, this option is only going to be available to you in version 2018.2. Uh, you, won't, you won't see this as an option in any of the previous versions. So go ahead and select center line, and it's as simple as hitting apply. And uh, very quickly, those center lines are extracted for you. Um, it really is that quick. With a slightly more complex model, it may take a little bit more time, but it's a very quick process. So we'll go ahead and close out of here. Um, next, I do recommend if you do have any center lines that you want to be bubblers or baffles, go ahead and change the properties of those curves before generating your beam element mesh. So I know that I want these four curves here to be baffles. So I'll go ahead and highlight over them, right click and change the property type. I'll select baffle. All right, letting me know that those properties have been converted. So once I click off, you can see, it might be a little hard to see, but uh, those are actually yellow curves now, which indicates, which is the color given for baffles. So that's done correctly. Um, next, we'll just go ahead up to mesh here and we'll go ahead and generate our mesh. And this is a pretty quick process here. So we'll go ahead and let this mesh generate here for a few moments. And one thing again I can point out is that the centerline curves do retain your uh, dimensional geometry from uh, your CAD model, which is which is really nice. Um, one thing I've noticed though is that the bubblers and baffles they seem to they don't seem to retain that information, so they do default to uh, basically default to 10 millimeters. I'm finding, so just keep in mind if you are generating your your beam element mesh and you do have any bubbler or baffle elements, beam elements that are generated, um, just do a double check, make sure that the dimensions are right on them. Um, I do know that I want these four baffles in this case to be 15 millimeters. Um, and I believe that they've defaulted to 10. So what we need to do is just right click, go to properties, and we'll update this from 10 to 15. All right, easy enough. So now we'll go ahead and apply our coolant inlet and uh, outlet boundary conditions. So we'll come up here, coolant inlet. I'll go ahead and place an inlet here, here, and here. Come back up, let's go ahead and place our outlets as well, which will be here, here, and here. So we now have an outlet for every inlet. Um, again, this is required in version 2018.2 when you have um, your construction areas uh, modeled in your cooling channels. So with that, um, next we just wanna go ahead and turn on our actual Part geometry here. I'll go ahead and create a quick mesh for this. Shouldn't take too long either. And then basically once our part model is meshed as well, all that's left to do is basically start the analysis. So we'll go ahead and let this finish. Pretty simple and quick. Simple and quick. This is a pretty simple part. Uh, part geometry here. Looks like it's just finishing up. Okay. And um, I, prior to sharing my screen, I had uh, gone in ahead and changed this um, analysis sequence to cool. So that's already been done for me, or I've already done that. Um, so. What we'll do now is go ahead and start our analysis. Again, this analysis doesn't take much time either, but I went ahead and have uh, had a solved version here for us. Um, basically what I wanted to point out with this, a uh, couple of the results, basically circuit flow rate. Um, so this result does highlight 
uh, your flow channel. So basically on this bottom uh, bottom channel here, we're, we're going in, up the baffle, uh, up the second, third, and fourth, and then back out. And it does highlight for you your uh, basically your construction channels in these areas will have your, your more stagnant flow, if you will. Um, so yeah, again, you can just see where your uh, stagnant flow would be for your construction channels. And then also in this circuit, coolant temperature, it's just showing you how those stagnant areas, um, you can see that first analysis finished up there for us. Um, on this circuit coolant temperature, you can see how those uh, construction channels and the stagnant flow in those areas are affecting the circuit, circuit coolant temperature here. Um, so I think everything looks good here. This bottom channel here, uh, you know, we're going in at 25C and coming out at 25.57. So a uh, gradual pickup of uh, heat removal um, through the baffle system and, and back out. Um, the channel here. So uh, I think everything looks good there. A couple other things I wanted to point out here is that if you, and as I had shown in the slide, um, in this version, if you do have those construction channels giving you multiple outlet options and you only place your uh, coolant inlet boundary conditions, the analysis will uh, error out or fail with this 702281 Again, letting you know that your particular uh, circuit inlet node has more than one uh, dead end in the circuit, and it's asking you to specify the outlet node so that the solver knows the path you'd like the uh, coolant to follow. And one other thing I wanted to cover here for you is that sometimes there are breaks in your cooling channel 3D that you're you're not aware of. Um, so we can use, the, again, the mesh connectivity diagnostics tool to help identify that. So if we were to go through the same workflow here on this model, uh, that includes basically highlighting again over the your channels here, and we wanna change the property type to channel 3D. All right, and then we'll co again come up to geometry, curves, center line, and we'll go ahead and hit apply. And as you can see, we have our uh, extracted center line curves again, quick and simple. Um, I know, again, I want these four down here to be baffles. Oh, I've got to close out of here first. So I want to highlight over these four curves, change the property type. We'll go to baffle. All right. Easy enough. Um, and again, next, all that's left is come up is to come up to mesh. We'll go ahead and select generate mesh. And again, I like to change the properties of the curves that I want to be bubblers or baffles first. That way, when the mesh is generated, it it has those properties and uh, correctly applies those three three elements there for you in the generation of the baffle. This should be finishing up here in just a moment. All right, and then just for good measure, go ahead and quickly update this to 15. All right, um, and then Lastly, what you can do here, just as a good sanity check, and, and I would have wanted to do this on my first model I showed as well, but you can come up under mesh and use the connectivity diagnostics tool just to make sure that your curves and your beams and everything is connected there for you. So um, for example, I'll go ahead and pick this channel down here, at the start of this channel down here, go ahead and show this. Um, so, you know, as expected, or basically everything is connected in this bottom channel here. Um, this is it's fine that these top two channels are red. They're obviously separate cooling systems, um, but as far as everything being connected in this one specific channel, this is showing us that everything checks out. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, we'll go ahead and check the next channel here. So again, connectivity, go ahead and pick right here. Uh, so what this is showing you is that there's actually a break right where the transition from blue, so everything in blue is connected here, uh, everything in red on this top 
colon channel is disconnected. This is helping to highlight that there was most likely a break in your imported uh, colon uh, CAD representation. Um, so when this is the case, all we need to do is use the generate beam uh, tool to basically reconnect these beam elements. So we'll go ahead and close out of here. And that's simple as I'll go ahead and turn on my nodes there. And we'll come up under geometry, themes. I'm going to go ahead and select. Let's see, it selected that inside for me, that inside, inside node. And then as my second node, I'll go ahead and select that. Click apply. And then already you can see now everything is blue. Uh, so that means that this channel is all connected. One thing I do want to point out is if we turn this back off, that inserted beam, um, you do have to come in and modify its properties since it's been created after the fact. So that's straightforward as well. So we'll just go ahead and right click on it and go to properties. Oh, I'm sorry, we'll right click and go to change property type. And we'll just go ahead and make it a channel. So it's now blue, it mat matches the rest, it's been assigned as a channel. And we just want to go back in and now update the its dimensions. So go ahead and make it 10 millimeters so that it matches the rest of the beam elements in this, this particular channel. There you have it. And again, just as a quick sanity check, you can go ahead and select this again and show that uh, everything is connected up there. All right, switching back. Um, so yeah, as, as a, for a brief summary for the topics that we've covered today, again, the steps for the center line extraction in MoldFlow Insight 2018.2 include importing a solid body into MoldFlow and assigning it with channel 3D properties. Uh, from here, you can extract the center lines from your solid body with the 3D cooling channel properties. Uh, lastly, you will generate your beam element mesh from your extracted center line curves. Uh, in this version release, the construction of bubblers and baffles has also greatly uh, been simplified. And as we've demonstrated, with the new with this new workflow, you only need to construct a single channel curve to represent either the bubbler or the baffle. Um, if your mold and your generated 3D cooling channels include construction channels and stagnant areas, you will need to uh, include both a coolant inlet boundary condition and a coolant outlet boundary boundary condition, so that mold flow can determine the correct coolant flow path. And again, a current limitation of this new workflow in 2018.2 is that tapered 3D bodies are not currently supported, meaning this workflow may not work for a tapered hot runner or sprue, for example. Uh, hot runners typically have sections that are tapered in transition areas. So even if you are able to generate an extracted center line from your hot runner, the extracted channel diameter specified in the CAD may not be correct, and you may need to do some manual tweaking and updating of diameters. So again, this new center line extraction feature was not designed for this, but we're hopeful it will be supported uh, also in an upcoming release. And with that, um, it does look like my colleagues have been doing a great job keeping up with some of the questions, or most of the questions that have been coming in. Um, if, you know, after you have some time to practice this workflow, if you do have any feedback or, or any questions from there, please feel free to, you know, post them to our MoldFlow Insight Forum. Um, as well as if you're on subscription, you can definitely reach out to us um, by generating a support case and we'll be happy to help you as well. Um, but we all do try to keep an eye out on the forums. Um, so specifically, if any center line extraction questions come in, we'll definitely um, work with you to get those answered. So with that, I just want to thank everyone for attending. Um, again, our Autodesk Multiflow Insight online help does have uh, great information on these, these new features as well. 
Um, additionally, Sim Studio Tools online help would be a good reference if, if your uh, CAD model does not include a 3D representation of your cooling channels. So again, you can use Sim Studio Tools to extract that information and then uh, save that file out as a step file and import it into Moldflow. Um, which is what I actually did to generate our sample model here today. Um, and also our Autodesk Knowledge Network does have a bunch of good published articles uh, that we've generated. So um, those are all good resources for you. And again, I will be uh, sending everybody out a YouTube uh, recording of this webinar, as well as a link to our Autodesk public box folder, which will include a PDF of today's slides, as well as all the sample models that were used. Um, so you can, you can have the same sample model to practice this workflow for yourself also. And with that, um, thank you everybody for attending and um, hope that everybody is able to give this a try and has some, some good feedback for us. Thanks and uh, have a great day, everyone.